Welcome. In this video, we are going to discuss the C++ CMath library. So, the CMath library, it declares a set of functions used to compute common mathematical operations and transformations. We will look at what some of these operations and transformations look like in this video. And in order to use this CMath library, you must use the preprocessor to include the library. And the syntax to do that is pound include open angle bracket CMath close angle bracket. And for all, we're going to go over a lot of functions in this video, but there is a lot more functions that we can't go in over in this video or else it would be way too long. So to find those functions, you can check out this website right here, c++.com slash reference slash cmath. And you can also see the documentation on any of the functions that we are going to go over at that same link. So the first functions we're gonna look at from cmath are going to be the basic mathematical functions. And that includes exponents, the square root, integer absolute value, and floating point absolute value. First, let us look at exponents. And just a note, every single um, function we're going to look over today in this video has a link after it. So that is what all of these links are. So if you want to learn more about these functions, just head on over to these links. And those links will all be in the description of this video. So first, let's look at exponents. And exponents are raising something to a power, such as this x to the y. And how do we do that with CMath and C++? Well, we use the POW function. And we are going to pass the, the number that we want to be raised to the exponent first, and then the exponent second. So in the case if we want to do, say, 2 to the third, we would put a 2 here and a 3 here, and we would get 2 to the third, which would be 8. Next, let us look at the square root function. And square root is looks just like this in math, except for in math, obviously, there would be a little bar over this. Too bad uh, Google Slides does not allow me to add that bar there. But anyways, how do we do that in C++? Well, we use the square root function or the SQRT function, and we pass whatever we want to pass to it. That could be some integer or arithmetic there. Next, we have the integer absolute value. And again, absolute value, for just like in math, is finding how far a number is away from zero. So basically, it's just taking the number, and if it's negative, making it positive. And how do we do that? We use the absolute value function if we have an integer or if the arithmetic we're doing results in an integer. And if it is floating point numbers that we're working with, then we use the floating point absolute value function. The difference is there is an F in front of the absolute. So you get abs in F abs or fabs for floating point. So let's take a look at these basic mathematical functions that are provided by CMath. So first, I would like to note that up here we have the CMath library included using the preprocessor with this line of code right here. And then if you come down here into main, you can see us using the CMath. So let us look at the exponents first. So we are raising this integer that is the number two to the power of three. So here we will get that math performed and it will get saved into this res variable. And then here we're gonna output it to the screen. Then down here we have this integer base at 25. So when we take the square root of that, we can expect five to be output on this line down here. Then here, we are gonna take the absolute value of this negative 2,342, and then output it to the screen, and we expect that to just be positive 2,000, 
342 that gets output to the screen because of this absolute value function here. And then down here, we are going to take this negative 12.2. 2134 and use a floating point absolute value on it here and output it to the screen and you should just expect that to be a positive 12.2134. So let's come over here to a terminal and compile this program and wait for a second and once that is done compiling we can run it with dot slash a dot out and you will see we get the expected output of the power of two to the three is eight. The square root of 25 is five. The absolute value of negative 2,342 is positive 2,342. And the floating point absolute value of negative 12.2134 is positive 12.2134. Next, let us take a look at the rounding functions provided from CMath. We have three of them, floor, seal, and round. Floor is used to round a number or equation up. So if I had 12.2 in here, it would round it down to 12. If I had 12.5 in here, it would round it down to 12. If I had 12.9, it would still round it down to 12. The seal, on the other hand, rounds up any number or equation. So if you have 12.9, it will round up to 13. If you have 12.5, it will round up to 13. If you have 12.1, it will round up to 13. And lastly, we have normal rounding, which rounds to the nearest integer value. So if you have any number below 0.5, well, the exponent of it is below 0.5, then it will round down. But if it is at 0.5 or above, it will round up. So if you have something like 2.49, it will round down to 2. And if you have something like 2.5, it will round up to 3. So let's take a look at rounding from a program. Again, we have the CMath library being included up here using the preprocessor. And then down here, we have some examples of the rounding functions. So the first one we are going to see is floor. And floor will round this 12.2 down to 12. We then have seal, which will round this 12.2 up to 13. And then we have an example of rounding down down here, which if you use round on a number before 0.5 for the mantissa, then it will round down, so we will expect 12 out of this one. And if the mantis uh, is 0.5 or greater, it will round up. So we will expect this to round up to 13 from this call to round. Let's save this and come over here and compile that program. And then we can run the program once it has compiled. And you see the floor of 12.2 is 12. The seal of 12.2 is 13. And then the round of 12.2 is 12, and the round of 12.5 is 13. And then just to reiterate on this fact, if we change this to a 9 over here, and save it and come over here, recompile, and run that program, you see we still get 12 and 13 for these two first two answers, because it's still rounding down for the floor and up for the... Now... Let's look at trigonometric functions that are provided by CMath. Those would be sine, cosine, and tangent. There are things like arc sine and arc cosine and arc tangent included in CMath, but we aren't going to go over those in this video. If you want to see those, check out their documentation at c++.com slash reference slash CMath. So to use these three trigonometric functions, we just use their respective functions in C++ and pass them some number in radians. And how do we pass it a number in radians? Because radians aren't so easy to remember. They're not as easy as something like degrees. So we convert degrees to radians. We start out with degrees and convert it to radians. So how do we do that? We use this formula right here, which is pi 
over 180 times degrees. Using these functions may seem difficult because you have to convert from degrees to radians, but it is simple once you take it to a program. So let's take a look at it from a program. We're again going to include CMath to use those functions, and we're going to need a constant to hold pi, and that should be a constant right there because we do not ever want to change the number of pi. So inside of main here, we have this degrees, which is equal to 30 degrees. This could be equal to any degrees, positive or negative. And then we can pass this degree or use this degrees in this equation right here, which is degrees times pi divided by 180. Again, the in the slide we just saw, the equation was a little bit different than what we're seeing right here, but it's because order of operations doesn't matter. So we're just multiplying the degrees times pi and then dividing it by 180. So if we do that conversion here, we can then output the conversion on the next line and it will show us the degrees and then the radians version of that degrees. And then we can come down here and use our three functions, sine, cosine, and tangent to output their respective results to the screen. So let's take a look at that from uh, the terminal. We can compile this by using G++ in the name of the program, and then wait for a second, and it creates our nice a dot out, which can be ran using dot slash a dot out. And we get the answer to converting the degrees to radians right here. And then we get that radians being passed to our three functions, which gives us the answer that we are looking for. That is all for now. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.